Located strategically on the equator, Indonesia, an archipelago country, is bestowed with remarkable oil and gas reserves. As one of the most prolific regions, Natuna Sea is known for its potential reserves deposited across several fields. Premier Oil PLC, a leading FTSE 250 independent exploration and production company with oil and gas interests in the North Sea, Southeast Asia and in the Middle East Pakistan regions, has been an operator in Indonesia since 1996 when it acquired a majority interest in the West Natuna Sea Block A production sharing contract or PSC in the Natuna region covering the Anoa field, a substantial gas reserve. While exploring the Anoa field to add significant value for its shareholders, Premier Oil through its subsidiary Premier Oil Natuna Sea BV, the operator of the West Natuna Sea Block A PSC succeeded in discovering and subsequent appraisal of the Naga, Iguana and Gajabaru gas fields. These additional gas field discoveries will eventually increase the company's production and these efforts will hopefully satisfy targets set by its stakeholders such as the operator, the joint venture partners and the government of Indonesia. Premier Oil secured astute commercial deals as demonstrated by the three additional gas sales agreements or GSAs signed in 2008 with Semcorp Gas Private Limited, PT Perusahan Listrik Nagara and PT Universal Batam Energy and these agreements ensure that gas from Naga, Iguana and Gajabaru Field will flow to Singapore and Batam Island. Along with gas from fields within the West Natuna Sea Block A PSC, the Gajabaru gas is sent to Singapore through the West Natuna Transportation System, or WNTS, a 650-kilometer gas pipeline network. It is estimated that the Gajabaru gas field is able to contribute more than 100 BBTU per day and the gas sales contract runs through to 2029. Located on the West Natuna Sea Block A PSC, the Gajabaru field comprises two wells, Gajabaru 1, discovered in 2000, and Gajabaru 2, discovered in 2004. Well appraisals successfully proved available gas in stacked reservoirs in the Arang Formation. Following the drilling appraisal conducted in September 2004, the estimated recoverable reserve was confirmed as 325 BCF or 9 BCM. The project approval of the Gajabaru field development was obtained in 2008. Following the EPCI or Engineering Procurement Construction and Installation contract bidding process, the project award for the production facilities was made in the second quarter of 2009 and first gas was flown into WNTS on 21 October 2011. In the initial phase of the Gajabaru field development, a wellhead platform was fabricated, transported and installed in August to September 2010 to facilitate the development drilling program. This program was undertaken over the 2010 to 2011 monsoon season and was completed ahead of schedule in February 2011. The next offshore campaign included the transport and installation of the Central Processing Platform, or CPP, setting of a bridge that linked the CPP to the wellhead platform, laying of a 2.7-kilometer, 16-inch export pipeline and hot tap tie-in to the existing WNTS to deliver gas to the customer, SEMGAS, in Singapore. The central processing platform includes an 8,200 metric tons topsides atop a 4,600 metric ton jacket 
which is fixed to the seabed with four skirt piles. The CPP includes facilities for compression, separation, glycol regeneration, gas metering, mechanical refrigeration, is fitted with a flare boom, possesses all necessary utilities and a 60-man living quarters topped by a heli deck. Meanwhile, the wellhead platform metrics are a topsides deck weighing 670 metric tons and a 1,100 metric ton four-legged conventionally piled jacket. In executing the Gajabaru development project, the consortium leader, PT Saipem Indonesia, was responsible for the engineering and procurement of materials and packaged equipment and for the transportation and installation of all components. Meanwhile, PT Smoe Indonesia, as a consortium partner, conducted fabrication and loadout of CPP topside, 60-man living quarters, flare boom and bridge, and completed the offshore hookup of all components and non-hydrocarbon commissioning. The work of fabrication and loadout of wellhead deck, wellhead jacket including piles, conductors and personal access landing, and CPP jacket including skirt piles and personal access landing become the responsibility of Nippon Steel Batam or NSB as the nominated subcontractor to SMOE. With the EPCI contractor's assistance, Premier Oil carried out the offshore hydrocarbon commissioning activities. The onshore fabrication started on the 31st August 2009 and the installation and commissioning of the offshore facilities was completed to allow flowing of first gas on 21st October 2011. The wellhead platform configuration is based on a four-legged lattice jacket substructure which weighed more than 1,100 metric tons. The substructure is stabilized and fixed by four 42-inch in diameter leg piles penetrating up to 80 meters below the seabed and is designed to withstand waves as high as 10 meters. The platform also has four pre-installed 36-inch in diameter drilling conductors penetrating 95 meters below the seabed. The combined weight of the piles and conductors is more than 1,200 metric tons. Fabrication of the wellhead jacket started 31st August 2009 and was loaded out from NSB on 17th August 2010 using a floating crane barge with a 3,200 metric ton hoisting capacity, Asian Hercules II, by lifting and placing the wellhead jacket on a cargo barge. Once sea fastened, the cargo barge and jacket were towed to the Gajabaru field for installation. In the field, a heavy lift barge, the Castro Otto, lifted, floated and then upended the wellhead jacket. Piling and installation of drilling conductors was then completed between 22nd August and 2nd September 2010. The fabrication of the wellhead deck started on 1st September 2009 and the completed article was loaded out exactly one year later on 1st September 2010. The deck was transported to the jetty and onto the barge using trailer buggies which had a transfer capacity of 5,000 metric tons. The cargo barge loaded with the wellhead deck was then towed to the field and the deck was lifted onto the jacket on 5th September using the Castoro Otto. Subsequent to welding out of the legs, the wellhead platform was officially handed over for development drilling on 6th September 2010. The configuration of the Central Processing Platform, or CPP, is based on an eight-legged jacket substructure weighing 4,600 metric tons, with an additional 1,300 metric tons for four 84-inch diameter skirt piles 
penetrating up to 102 meters below the seabed. Each pile was installed as a single piece, 125 meters in length. The fabrication of the CPP jacket was started on 19th February 2010 and was loaded out on 28th May 2011. The skidding of the jacket to the jetty and onto the barge utilized strand jacks and following sea fastening, the barge sailed away on 5th June 2011. On 13th June 2011, the CPP jacket was launched from the barge and using the Castoro Otto was upended the same day. Following the weld out of transition pieces, installation of the four skirt piles and the removal of the flotation tanks, the jacket installation was completed on 23rd June with the erection of the personnel access platform. The central processing platform or CPP topsides weighing approximately 8,000 metric tons includes a high standard 60 man accommodation module a 19 meter diameter aluminium heli deck and a 114 metric ton flare boom. The platform topsides facilitates the full processing and compression of gas to achieve the required export quality. The fabrication of the CPP topside started on 30th October 2009. The main deck pancake was stacked on 19th July 2010 and the completed living quarters module was lifted onto the top sides on 18th December 2010. In early April 2011, the top side was jacked up to allow the installation of the deck support frame and fabrication was effectively completed on 7th June 2011. Loadout using strand jacks was successfully completed on 24th June and following sea fastening, the cargo barge sailed away on 3rd July 2011. The CPP topsides was installed using the floatover method on 6th July and the CPP to wellhead platform bridge was lifted into position using the Castoro Auto on 8th July 2011. Between the installation of the CPP jacket and the topside's floatover activity, the Castoro Auto completed the laying of the 2.7 km export gas pipeline on 30th June, and the diving support vessel, or DSV, arrived in the field on 6th July 2011 to start installation of the tie-in spools. The DSV completed all pipeline plems and spool installation by 25th July and the hot tap into the WNTS was successfully carried out on 26th July. The export pipeline was then subsequently hydro tested, dewatered and vacuum dried on 26th July, 4th August and 17th August 2011 respectively. Nitrogen purging of the export pipeline was then completed on 22nd August. Meanwhile, the hookup and commissioning, or HUC, 400 berth accommodation support barge was being loaded with materials and personnel in Batam. The barge arrived in the field on 11th July and the gangway was connected to the CPP topsides on 16th July, effectively starting the HUC phase. By 8th August, sufficient hookup work had been completed to allow early habitation of the 60-man living quarters, and by 18th August, the main hookup scope was effectively complete. This allowed introduction of fuel gas from the wellhead platform to take place on 26th August and the corresponding mechanical acceptance was issued on 4th September. The WNTS valves were lined out by a DSV on 7th September 2011 and the light off of gas turbine compressors A and B were achieved on 13th and 19th September, respectively. The production of gas meeting contract gas quality took place on 29th September, 
following the flowing of gas through the refrigeration and glycol packages. Upon receipt of the commissioning gas export permit on 19th October, subsequently registered by Indonesian Customs on 20th October, first gas export into the WNTS was achieved on 21st October 2011 at 0825 hours. Premier Oil's commitment to upholding safety, health and environmental standards in all of its operations was exemplified by the Gajah Baru project, which achieved in excess of 7.5 million man-hours without a lost time incident, or LTI. This record was the culmination of nearly 30 months of diligent implementation and monitoring of safe working practices and procedures, including specialized training on rigging, scaffolding and dropped objects in both fabrication yards. In conclusion, it is expected that the Gajah Baru gas will bring additional revenue to all stakeholders, specifically to the government of Indonesia, while also providing a positive impact on the local community. Moreover, the Gajah Baru development obviously created a large amount of local employment opportunities, both in Java as well as in Batam, and highlighted Premier's commitment and dedication to boosting local economies. Embracing the start of operations from the Gajah Baru field, Premier Oil is renewing its commitment to being a good neighbor wherever it operates in the world.